this particular show in New York always has a really good turnout because the media is right down the street. I think you're going to see it threefold uh, the attention around it because it's already being covered you know heavily just just in uh, the proposed le- legislation or the talking about it and it's already creating a buzz so if in if in fact that comes to fruition man it's going to be uh, attendance is going to be high exhibitors are going to be high advertisers are going to be high I mean, it's going to be big for the shows Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Cashing Out, brought to you each week by Hoban Law. Today, we have my co-host, Gina Gelbert from Align Business Advisory Services with me again. Hey, Dina. Hey, Dan. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Happy New Year to you. Yeah. We've been off for a couple weeks with the holidays. Not a lot goes on. I suspect it's pretty common in the mergers and acquisition business that it gets quiet as you go through the Christmas, New Year's holiday. It does. Yeah. Is that something that you battle with just about everybody? Yeah, with everything from, you know, every type of M&A we do, whether it's from fundraising to exits to acquisitions, we always see, I call it the holiday cliff, come about the, you know, 18th to the 20th of the month, pretty much through the new year, we always see just a sharp fall off. You know, everybody's off for holidays, we're on vacation. You know, we tend to have high level conversations with folks, you know, if they're traveling, you know, and they're in an airport, sometimes they like to respond to email or, you know, have a couple introductory conversations, but nothing really ever moves in a meaningful way over the holidays. And especially with the fact that there's so many stakeholders in a transaction. So there's, you know, the two parties, obviously, but then there's attorneys and bankers and, you know, all sorts of other yeah. folks who get get involved. And so, you know, it's it's rare if we can ever get all of those people's attention at the end of the year, even though we certainly try our hardest. So I find that you have high expectations for the holidays because you're like, okay, well, I won't have these demands. I think people make commitments that they just, there's no way they're going to be able to satisfy. And especially if you're in the middle of a deal, Yep. You feel like they're just ignoring you or because we plan to talk or we plan to have this done and we plan to have this ready to go. And Mm -hmm. I think when they make the plan, they have the best intentions. But once the holiday vortex hits, you just don't have time and you just don't have the energy. And you're like, listen, wait. And and if if you're on the wrong side of that one, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. maybe they don't Mm want to do this anymore. And then you start to panic and maybe make a bad move. Mm-hmm. The key to getting through the holidays is just chill. <laughs> but, exactly right. We tell folks all the time, just take it for what it is and nothing more than a vacation. It doesn't mean that folks' intentions have changed or that it's an indication of you know, changing perception of the value of the deal or anything like that. It's really strictly people are just out of the office. They're with family, you know, whether they have kids or they don't, whether they're you know, traveling. A lot of folks tend to take overseas vacations because it's an extended period of time. And so, you know, oftentimes when that's the case, they're just un- truly unreachable. Even in today's Wi-Fi <laughs> world, um, the physicality of get, you know, time changes and you know, getting a hold of folks is, is really difficult to do. But it's very easy to get tied up in that emotional you know, connection. Like, oh, we, you know, we said we were going to get this done and, and, and we're not. And what does that mean? Yeah. And it really, you know, it's a momentum thing. You know, I always say it sucks, you know, nope. when you have your heart set on something getting done, but don't panic. Don't overthink uh, it. Don't overthink yeah. it. Yeah, just don't overthink it. Well, think, you know. well, moving forward to our deal, I guess, let me just say we had some exciting news coming out of New York state, which as many of our listeners know, our first trade show, our big trade, one of our big trade shows is in New York city and mm-hmm. Governor Cuomo finally came around and says, look at, I'm gonna, within the first hundred days, I'm going to have some legislation on my desk to pass laws for making marijuana or cannabis legal, recreationally legal in, in New York state, which is a gigantic thing for the whole country, for the whole Huge. industry, but particularly for this trade show. Holy cow, this is going to be big. For sure. I mean, we've talked about in past shows that you, this particular show in New York always has a really good turnout because the media is right down the street. I think you're going to see it threefold the attention around it because it's already being covered, you know, heavily just in the proposed legislation or the talking about it. And it's already creating a buzz. So if in fact that comes to fruition, 
man, it's going to be, tenants is going to be high, exhibitors are going to be high, advertisers are going to be high. I mean, it's going to be big for the show. So that's a, a really nice boon for this deal in particular because you'll be heading into that show come come the summer sure, so it's going to be a lot of good momentum yeah the the exhibitors just they just benefit so much from being at, in new york because they get all this free earned media just yeah. all these interviews that otherwise they wouldn't even have a chance at just walk over to their booth and there's a camera in their face so that's yeah. why the show has historically done great well and also with the investor community is all there and there's and, and so yeah. uh, but now we have new jersey is they have a, they had a couple things that they're working out, but it looks like that legislation is going to be moving forward. So New Jersey is going to have a rec bill in place quickly. Yeah. New York's positioning. It looks all the, all the, the you were reading the tea leaves. Everything looks right in New York. So I mean, this, this is, this is going to be good for the, like I said, for the entire industry. So, but, but particularly agree. for the show. So, yeah. And taking a step further, I mean, you know, Elizabeth Warren just declared her um, candidacy for president and, one of her key platform points is, is cannabis and marijuana. So yeah. I think with her kind of first coming out with the rest, by her setting that precedent, I think it's going to be something hotly discussed and debated. And it's going to be a key item for both parties over the next year and a half as we head into the presidential elections as well. So I think the light is shining on the political landscape at a much higher level um, in New York leading the pack. And that's going to do nothing but bode well for this show. Yeah, in and these, like our the East Coast and the New England or Boston show in New England with it's just yeah. like that was the sleeping giant. And now when the, with those states coming around, it's going to be, I mean, it, it would be really hard for the federal government to let all this happen without getting involved. So I think the dominoes are falling fast. And so, well, mm-hmm. let's talk about what we have to do now. The, the holidays are over, you know, yeah, we, holidays we have, are over. we want to give everybody sort of a recap of where we are and what we're working on over the next few weeks to try to catch everybody up to speed. Yeah. Absolutely. So last we spoke prior to the holiday, we were having quite a few conversations with quite a few interested parties, which is great. Our momentum has really kicked up. Uh, and it's interesting the different types of parties who are interested as well, which I, you know, that's always a key strategy of ours for clients is getting a breadth and a mix of, of different types of, of interested kind of parties. So we have investment funds, we have other media outlets. Um, you know, it's a wide breadth of folks who uh, who have a real interest. Uh, and we, we, I will say, suffered a bit from the holiday cliff. As I like to say, we had a lot of good meetings leading right up to the holiday. Uh, but then everybody pretty much said, you know, hey, yeah, let's continue conversations after the holidays. And so most of the folks are still out through the end of this week will be coming back come the 7th-ish. Uh, and and then, you know, the irony is that while the holidays are slow, we often find that January becomes a bit of a shotgun start. Like everybody's off to the races because for most, it's a new fiscal year. So there's new you know, bonus incentives at stake. There's new targets. There's new objectives. There's new strategy for all of these interested parties. And the sooner they can execute on those and start bringing in assets into the fold to help them grow and help them achieve those metrics for 2019, um, the better. So while it always is a bit painful to to get through the quiet holiday season. What we actually see is that over the next two to three weeks, things are just off to the races. So for uh, for your deal in particular, Dan, you know we're going to continue these conversations, and they're going to they're going to take I think a hard shift into real serious terms. We're going to start talking term sheets and and getting real uh, solid interest with momentum towards a closing. I'm hopeful now. I have no crystal ball, but I'm hopeful by the end of the month to early February. Yeah. Any of the people that were. I'm not going to hold you to this, but any of the people that were moving into those next phase discussions, are they uncomfortable or will they be comfortable being on the show? Or do you think there's any chance we can get them to, to join us on the show? It's worth asking. I would yeah. say in this next wave of conversations with them, I think we should ask, you know, it's something that I talk about with them often and, and always send them links to uh, each week as we release it so that they can yeah. you know get a feel for how um, the momentum and the fact that, you know, this is also uh, an opportunity to educate the greater industry, which a lot of them, especially those who are media outlets, find a true value. They think it's really cool that we're doing that. So hopefully we can, but Whenever their attorneys start to get involved, you just never know. So yeah. fingers crossed, we can convince them that they if, uh, that they will. We'll yeah, I, I understand. We were a little bit surprised. When some of them said, ah, "You know, I'm just not comfortable." It's kind of the yeah. same thing. It's when somebody's kicking the tires, they don't want the world to know that they're kicking the tires. It's and then yeah. when they get and then as they get a little bit further down, they take it for a test drive. They're doing a few, 
now they really don't want anybody to know because when they don't want one of their competitors jumping in and creating a bidding war. So it's, I, I get it. I get it. They don't want to make this public, but it'd be, it'd be nice if we could yeah. grab a few of them. Well, we're going to sure. give recaps. We're going to give updates, but. Oh, hundred yeah. yeah. percent. And, you know, I, I'm glad that you said that because that's something, you know, that we see often in all the deals that we do in cannabis. There is, because it's an emerging industry and the strategies that investors are invoking truly are proprietary and they are trying to be the first to do something or be the first to grab a certain share, or be the first to do something in a certain vertical. Uh, they like to keep it a little hush. Uh, and so, you know, even our firm, it's oftentimes we'll have clients who will ask us for references and and depending on what vertical, and then we may or may not be able to provide them because yeah. we, you know, we hold confidentiality very near and dear when uh, when the parties want to have it there. And so it, it can be a stumbling block sometimes, but because folks are trying to be so strategic that they don't want others to know what they're up to. But I think on the subsequent shows, as we, you know, over the next few weeks, we can give a high level recap if the folks won't join us, so that folks can still see what the next steps are like, and we can even recap some of the high level topics of conversation, what concerns and feedback are and, and still give folks the feel that they're there, even if the, you yeah, know, like, the other parties don't want to come on. Like you mentioned, there are other verticals that are saying, you know what, a trade show is a great mm-hmm. way for me to promote my brand and a great way for me to touch a lot of different companies, maybe owning or, or having an ownership in a, in a trade show. Mm-hmm. It's it, Traditionally, it wouldn't be something that we, you would think of, but again, in cannabis, we're rewriting the rules. So maybe yep. now that with the technology and everything, it fits really nicely within their structure of their company. And it really is a great way for them to market their product or their brand or their messaging. So that's mm-hmm. why, like you said, and they don't want their competitor to say, oh yeah, that is a good idea. Maybe I should do it too. And so yep. that's why you're right. I, I get it. I completely get it. I wish they would, because it'd be really good, right. good, good information for our listeners, but you guys can read between the lines. So <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so we can wrap it up today, but next week I do have a couple interviews lined up, so with a couple yeah. more investors. Like always, if anybody has any questions or thoughts or ideas or comments or people that they think we should send us an email. Send us an email at connect at mjbulls.com. And wanted to give one one shout out to Jamie Humiston, who produces the music for us for the show. So thanks, Jamie. We will circle back next week, next Sunday, and keep keep this thing going. Keep and it going, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, Dina. Thanks, Dan. Enjoy it as always. Take care. Have a good week.